Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and um, it's Marissa, and as you can tell, I'm joined by my friend Martin. Um, he's also in MedSci, he just finished MedSci year one with me, because we're in the same graduating class, but um, we got put in a Facebook group, and we got asked to answer some questions for incoming MedSci students, and we thought instead of answering them over text, that we would answer them in a video. So um, that's what we're doing for you today. I hope you enjoy the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and Martin's, and let's get started. So the first question that we got is what is the course workload like for first year in terms of assignments and how much time we spend studying? I feel like it was a lot compared, I mean, there was like, high school, right? Yeah, I, I, guess, school. I feel like I spent like pretty much the entire week after like classes studying and then like weekends and the only time I wasn't studying was like when I was going out. I don't know. But, yeah, like, I think did you spend studying. I think for me, it's like usually in high school i spend a lot of time studying anyway so it wasn't that big of a deal but the big difference is that you're taking five courses per term and as opposed to like four course four courses that you're normally taking in high school mm -hmm. and this, if you're one of those people who took a lighter grade 12 year like i did and yeah. it, took like a, it was kind of it was kind of like a big jump because yeah. i was taking two courses in my last semester of high school really? so i was like yeah, I was like, oh I came God. in on like five courses. Wow, that's like even more than double yeah, of what I, I was taking. I guess it's kind of different too, though, for you, because in high school, we didn't do semesters in BC. Like, we just have eight courses that we do throughout the whole year. So, like, I mean, I gave myself like four spares in grade 12. So, like, I didn't have, like, compared, like, jumping into that was a lot. But, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I spent, we spend a lot of time studying. Um, assignments wise, like what type of assignments did we get? I mean, bio was like hella annoying, I found. <laughs> just really? Cause... I thought that, I thought that calculus yeah. was annoying. Okay, well yeah, calc, like web work. There's a yeah. lot of online homework. Um, so like, what was the, mastering chem, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah, mastering chem, oh boy. Web assigned for physics. Web it's just like homework assignments, just little things pile up. It's kind of annoying. You do yeah. one thing and then there's another it's small like, thing. It's like every week too. And then it takes like the whole week. And then as soon as you finish it, there's another one. So mm -hmm. kind of like continuous, it goes on and on and on. So yeah. Just, so you really can't finish. let up on the gas pedal pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't let yourself go at all. <laughs> you have to keep on it. Um, and then what courses did we take during the year? So we, I mean, we took the four core. So bio, yeah. chem, physics, physics, ALK, and then Apple math. Yeah. Right. And then what, you, what was your elective? My elective was psych. Yours was a language, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I did, I did AP psych. So I didn't, obviously didn't want to do psych again. So I did Spanish full year. Um, That's interesting. It was all right. I did it to get the B credit. So I don't know what credit psych is. Is that a C? Psych, I think it, it's an A credit, right? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. And the second question is, what is the difficulty level compared to high school? I already talked about it but for us it was a lot just because of I mean we barely had anything going on in grade 12. I, yeah. think. I think like the course load is hard but like the course work is about the same level yeah you know what I mean yeah I think Read the difficulty is just harder it's just like you have to, I feel like you have to think more in depth about it it's not just like you memorize something you spit it out I feel like in university you have to like memorize it apply it because I didn't have to apply anything in high school really like yeah. for me I had to apply I had to apply it already so it's not as big of a jump for me in terms of difficulty. It's just like the sheer quantity of it is just. Yeah, there is a lot more. And I feel like you like are expected to do a lot more for yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. I think a lot of my high school teachers said that to me in grade 12, like, oh, no one's going to help you in university. Yeah, which think, there's not as much handholding, basically. Yeah, exactly. But I think also to a degree of like when teachers say that, I feel like you can get help if you need it, obviously. Like there's yeah. so centers and like profs are so willing to talk to you so you can't be stubborn like yeah. I'm, I'm kind of stubborn but like you, you can't yeah you can't exactly. yeah especially if like you need the help you just go get it but okay um the third question is what do people mean when they say med sci is competitive uh i think <laughs> that what that means is like obviously since we're med sci like you kind of expect a lot of us to be going for med because are you are you all right yeah, most people are going for med, and like, since med is so competitive in Canada, well, it, everywhere is competitive, but especially here in Canada, everyone wants to get the highest grades, and like, oh, I need to study for the MCAT, even though it's like year oh, one. What? Yeah, exactly. Like, some people are like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
in that sense, people want to be the best. Yeah, and I think in that way, like, I feel like I, you experience it the most in first year just by people, like, not really sharing their answers or not being so willing to, like, help you out. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like in other um, programs, I feel like they're more willing to, like, sit together and help each other through, like, an essay or a project or something like that. Like, yeah. I, I think, like, within, like, friend groups, obviously, like, me and my friends will help each other out a lot, but, like, just, like, random people you know, like, if you ask in a group chat for, like, some help, they, you don't necessarily get it left on red yeah exactly the next question is i never took physics in grade 11 or 12 will physics physics be a challenge <laughs> oh okay, that's pretty common would you like to give some insight on that oh um, yeah so i only took physics in grade 11. i took physics i think in grade 11 only mm -hmm. um i did not take it in grade 12 and i found physics quite difficult <laughs> but honestly i think it was easier than calculus especially with that exam, but I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, well, same here because like I took physics in grade 11 and then in grade 12, I was taking it, but then I kind of was like, I was too much homework for my senior year, so I just dropped it. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of sad, but I think first terms physics is a lot of grade 11 reviews, so it wasn't yeah. too, too hard, especially because the test writer, like Sting, was pretty easy with his exam. Yeah. And I think but, with physics exams too, it's not so much doing the problems, it's a lot of theory. It's a lot more theory than I thought yeah. it would be. And I think the reason I didn't do as well, like I thought that physics was one of the harder courses, you know what I mean? I didn't do any of the coursework and I barely went to class. So yeah, exactly. It's a little bit on me. So yeah. it's just like, even if you find a course boring or something like that, you should still do the work for it. So Yeah, exactly. I feel the same. Like I barely went to those classes and just because, I mean, the profs were pretty bad. <laughs> so like it wasn't helpful. Um, but even still, like, I think after seeing like my first semester physics marks, I was like, okay, like, Abby, we need to go to class and like sit there and listen and actually take notes and pay attention. And we tried, but honestly, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. I think it's because the second term, the physics got a little less like heavy on the high school review. It was actually like a little bit new mm -hmm. or it was the grade 12 content that we both missed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. But it, going to class made a little bit of a difference for me. I think I got 2% higher, but I think it's because the well, content difference is all you need. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. How much harder would it be to take physics 1301 instead of 1028? I don't even really know what 1301 is, to be honest. At 1301, I think it's the okay. physics that the engineering takes, right? Oh, really? Probably. I think it, it says physics for engineering, I think. Okay. So, I mean, I figured it'd be a lot harder. I don't know if, I don't know anyone personally besides, like, the Eng kids I know that took it. Do yeah, I'm pretty sure that it focuses a bit more on the math side of things, like, deriving equations so yeah. it's not something I would like to do yeah personally. like if your goal is like to do research or yeah. med school I don't think it would be very biophysics <laughs> yeah I mean bio I, don't know. I don't know <laughs> but I mean yeah I feel like that's a very specific niche but they also said like is it possible for someone with a 90 percent plus who's genuinely interested in physics to do well I mean if you're interested I mean if you're interested why not? yeah I don't know if we can speak too much on this one. Yeah. Um, and then another question is, what are some of the best bird courses at Western? Do you know any? <laughs> to be honest, I think they're all, like, they. I mean, they all take effort, right? I mean, yeah. I think I did good with Spanish in the way that, like, Abby, my roommate, was fluent in Spanish, so she helped me a lot. My sock was fluent in Spanish. And, like, a lot of it's online, and you don't have to do too much in class. But I mean, it's still hard. Like I didn't do extremely well in it. Also because I didn't care about it. I don't know. Well, how about you? I just think that it's really subjective to call something a bird course because for example, if like I get really high in chemistry, I can't really say it's a bird course because the average is like 70 something, right? Yeah. And like, it's really up to the effort and like your, like what you put into it is what yeah. you're going to get. In, like, yeah, I think one thing I would recommend is like I mean I was not interested in taking Spanish whatsoever and like the coursework was like actually really easy and I but the fact that I didn't give a shit about it really just like made me not want to do it at all and I think that's like, like me with Cal. yeah exactly so if you have like more interest in it you're gonna do better and I think so like when you're choosing your that one elective you get in med sci um I feel like it'd be a good idea to like 
choose one that you're actually sort of interested in. I know I was so, yeah. in philosophy for like one class and I could not take the readings. So yeah, so you should at least like, yeah, choose something that you like to study and you'll actually study it, you know? If you're just, can you explain A, B, and C courses? Because I mean, it's kind of course planning right now, but I remember I messed this up so badly when I did this last year. Like I did like physics. I think I signed up for like bio 1001 two times. Oh, wow. A and B, because I thought it was part one is A and part two is B, but it's not like that. I messed it up really bad. Um, but um, there's like that, and then there's also like the breadth, right? Yeah, you need 1.0 credits in each of the A, B, and C categories, yeah. right? Yeah, I think that's for any program at Western. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think category A falls under more of like the social sciences. Studies, yeah. B is like the languages, I think, so arts and humanities. Yeah, and like, f I mean, philosophy was under there, Spanish was under there, that's why I did Spanish to get that B credit. Um, philosophy, I think you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. So that's... And C, we're, we're heavy yeah, on it, we're science. Yeah, it's just sciences, so like, you don't really have to worry about that one. Um, and then for scheduling, the A, because it's, it's confusing because there's two different A's and B's, because there's, for scheduling too, there's like part one of the, or A, which is like, first semester and then B which is second semester and then and if you're taking if you're taking an essay course it's F first semester and G second semester yeah so hell annoying and like then, there's no letters which was like for Spanish the course the course code is like 1030 and there's no letters it just means it's full year full year yeah yeah it started me so long to understand <laughs> like, oh, damn. but yeah I mean we yeah. can put a link in the description for the course A B and C yeah like, more exactly. details on that yeah exactly so um, that's only seven questions of the course related questions. And we're going to do the next seven on Martin's channel. So make sure you go check that out after you watch this. Um, but then I'm going to jump into housing related and social life questions that we got now. And the first one is, do you know or have any friends that lived off campus your first year? How was their experience of it and being able to manage interactions with others? Personally, I don't know very many people who lived off campus. I think I know two people who came from Vancouver who lived in off campus, but like I'm not really close with them, so I don't really know their experience that well. Do you? <laughs> Me neither, because we both lived on campus, so it's pretty yeah. hard to find them. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I guess we can speak to like, did we know very many off campus people? I guess not. So I guess that kind of speaks to like, I mean, you're not as close in the community, I feel like, if you're not in They do have their own community though, right? Yeah, but exactly. it's just that it's harder because you're in separate buildings. Yeah, no. and I think the whole thing with res is like obviously you're living with like 800 other people in your year, mm -hmm. so like it's so much easier to like go down the hall and like meet someone or people on your floor. So yeah. I think like it is kind of a big like it's a way different experience. We can't really speak on it, obviously, but yeah. Um, the next question is: I'm still debating whether or not to live in residence for first year, and I was wondering if it would I would be missing out or feel left out if I just commuted from home? Are there any benefits to living on res, proximity to peers, et cetera? You, we kind of already answered that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I like, I don't think I even considered not living in res, did you? Yeah, me neither, because I'm, well, you, of course you can. Yeah, well, no, it was weird because I remember when I was just about to move out, um, like family friends would be like, so like, are you living in res? You have to, right? Like you're going to. And I was like, I didn't even question not living in res. Like, I don't know how you would go about that. Um, for first year but I mean I mean I would think commuting is very taxing especially if you live like hours away and yeah. it takes a lot of time out of your day and especially if you're one of those people who think that oh I can just like study on the bus or or the subway or whatnot yeah. like what are the odds yeah really <laughs> like let's be um, real yeah I know I had like a couple people in my bio group who like couldn't afford res and they lived off campus in like a two bedroom apartment and there was like four of them in there. Yeah, I know. Um, and that made it a lot cheaper, but I know for a fact that they didn't feel as like included in anything. I know that they like had their close group of four friends, but they'd go back like right after labs, like the four of them would get together and they, they just leave campus. Um, so yeah, I mean, when if it comes to like affordability, like if you can't afford it, there's like ways to like put yourself out there and meet people, I think. Like there's always going to be a way. Yeah, club, club week's always a thing. Yeah, exactly. Like joining clubs and that type of stuff always adds to it. Okay, so the next question and the final question for this video. Um, 
is how do you balance social life and school? And I think our experiences on that are different, as you mentioned. Um, but for me, I mean, I would like work through the week as a goal to like reach the weekend so I can like go out and party or like go clubbing with my friends. Um, so that's how I kind of how I managed it. Like I think sometimes during the week we'd like go out to a specific cafe so we could just like go for like a bus ride somewhere to study and then come back. It's a lot of just like little things for me. I don't, I mean, my experience is different than yours, so you can explain yours, but. <laughs> yeah, basically I just balance my social life in school. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't really like feel a huge need to go out all the time. I mean, that's just me. It's mm -hmm. up to personal preference. Yeah, that's a lot of people too though. So, yeah, it's yeah. how you feel about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm okay with just sitting down and studying for a while. And, yeah, like, even if I don't go out often, I still feel like I have a balance if I'm not exactly studying 20%. Yeah. And right? I mean, there's, like, other ways to, like, have a break in your studying, too, besides going out and partying and drinking all the time. Yeah. Um, like, most of the time, I just go to, like, gym because I'm, like, part of Western Dragon Boat. So mm -hmm. I just do that, and it just... I guess that's a bit of a de-stressor for me, I guess. Yeah. And, I mean, how do you balance? You just, you just try your best. Yeah, you just have to figure it out. And, like, you have to remember that, like, you're, like, I, I mean, I said this already, but, like, you're working towards what you want to do at the end of the week. Like, for me, like, usually at, at the end of the week, my goal was, like, to get all this stuff done so I can go out and party, like, but sometimes it's, like, other things, you know? Like, you just have to put that in your yeah. mind, listen to yourself, and not, like, give in to like feeling the peer pressure of just wanting to go out regardless of the work you have to do. Yeah, because if you put a goal that's too long term, it's pretty hard to see the end of the tunnel yeah, basically. Exactly, exactly. So like kind of small goals, which is something I've learned for summer school too, like holy crap. Okay, um, those are all the questions for my part of the video. We are doing a part two on Martin's channel, so we can go check that out. I'll put the link in my description. I'll put a little tag somewhere. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this was useful. Let us know if you have any more questions. You can DM or comment. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week.